When we talk to customers at Debug Bear, one common issue that comes up is that people don't understand why the data they get from PageBear Insights doesn't match the data they get from Google Lighthouse. In this video, we take a look at various different data sources, different ways to collect data, and why they result in different metrics. If you look at the LCP metric in this View User Data section and compare it to the Google Lighthouse result below, we can see that in the lab test result, the page took 5.9 seconds to load, but for real users, it actually only took 3.4 seconds to load. So that's actually really common. So generally what you will see is that your real user metrics are better than what you get in a lab test result. So first of all, why is that? Most of the time it's because real users tend to have a better network connection compared to what's used in a lab test results. So here you can see for the crux data from Google's Chrome user experience report at the top, uh, which is the real user data, the network that is used to collect this data obviously depends on whatever network the customer or visitor of the website is on at that point when the data is collected. Um, but if you scroll down um, to the lab test result, so this is, by the way, this is Google Lighthouse. So Google Lighthouse and what you see in the diagnostic section of Patreon Insights, it's fundamentally the same thing. Uh, later on, we go a bit more into the differences. We talk about different ways to configure Lighthouse and why even Lighthouse scores uh, kind of differ between each other. Uh, but yeah, for now, that's the main thing to keep in mind, that this is just a Lighthouse test result. And if we look at the um, test settings section down here, you can actually see what network connection is used to collect this data. And here we can see that the network connection is throttled quite aggressively. So the round trip time on the network between the server and the client is about 150 milliseconds, and then the bandwidth is about 1.6 megabits per second. And that is typically a lot slower than what you get for real users. I have some data here recently from the UK, where you can see that the response time, so the round trip time on a mobile network in the UK is typically about 20 milliseconds on a fast network, or even on a slow network is about 40 milliseconds. And that kind of st stands in contrast to the 150 milliseconds RTT that we saw before by looking at the Lighthouse test result. And you can see that even on a slow-ish uh, 3G mobile connection in the UK, we can still transfer about six megabytes of data per second. And that's a lot less than the 1.6 megabits per second uh, that we get on in the Lighthouse result. Uh, and we should also consider that a lot of people are gonna have faster connections than that. So that is one reason why generally you will see that your uh, Lighthouse lab results are gonna be worse than the user data. So if you're seeing score discrepancies between tools, that is one thing you can look at early on as well, just to understand if that's maybe causing score discrepancies. So Debug Bear, we have the free website speed test tool. And you can see this is like a mobile connection, but it's actually like a faster network that we use. So we can see that to make it a bit more realistic, we use a round trip time of 70 milliseconds instead of 150 milliseconds. So it's gonna be a lot faster. And accordingly, you can see that, you know, the LCP score that we get for this test is gonna be a lot better. Now in our product, you can configure how fast the network should be. So here we try to match the Google Lighthouse default throttling settings for mobile a bit more closely. Uh, you can see it's 1.6 megabit per second, 150 milliseconds round trip time. And then we can see the large contemporary paint metric that we collect here is actually a bit worse than in the free test, just because a slightly slower network connection is being used to collect this data. Now, there are many ways to run a Google Lighthouse. So we looked at uh, PageSpeed Insights, we looked at Debug Bear, uh, we can also take a look at Chrome DevTools. So if I go into the Lighthouse tab and just click Analyze, it's also gonna run a PageSpeed test and it will still use like the default throttling settings as before. So now that this is finished, we can see that when I test this on my local computer, the LCP score actually is 6.2 seconds. So what makes this test actually different from what was running on PageSpeed Insights? So there are a few things we can look at. One, obviously, that this is running on my computer. It's running from where I am located in the UK. So that might impact performance depending on where the website is hosted. If you look at PageSpeed Insights, we can look at the Lighthouse settings and look the tooltip for the network throttling and we can see the browser location is in Europe. So PHP Insights uh, has four global test locations. The Europe one is in the Netherlands and PHP Insights picks a test location depending on where you're testing. If you have a team member who's located in the US and you have another team member who's located in Asia, but you know, your website is hosted in the US, the team member that's located in Asia is gonna have a worse PHP Insights score compared to what you're getting uh, when running a test on PHP Insights. So what else is different between these two test environments? So I have a fast computer, and if we look at the um, settings in here, that's fine, nice. We can see it's still emulating a slow device, 
but you can see the, this is called the benchmark index. So I have a benchmark index of 3,670. And because a mobile device that a user might be visiting the website with is probably gonna be less powerful than a laptop, um, Google does apply some uh, CPU throttling in Lighthouse. So that's kind of where the 4X lowdown comes in to emulate, you know, the kind of page speed that you might experience when you're visiting the website from a mobile device. So here the benchmark index is 3,670. I look at page for insights and it is actually a lot worse. So with this test result, it's just 547. Um, I think it varies a bit. So let's try this other result as well. Let's see if we can see um, some similar data. Here it's actually surprisingly poor, so 249. But anyway, we can see that it, PHP Insight is a lot less powerful in terms of CPU processing compared to my computer. Um, however, one thing that is different is that the CPU throttling that PHP Insights uses is actually different from what Lighthouse normally uses. So when Lighthouse runs a performance test, the throttling that it applies does not match what is going to be used when you're testing with uh, Chrome DevTools or if you're using the command line tool where normally the CPU throttling is um, 4x. And the reason for that is because the PHP Insights test environment is so slow, they kind of want it to be a bit more realistic so they don't apply the same amount of throttling that they would in a faster environment. Another thing that you can notice here is that after the slowdown it says it is simulated. And if we look at the network settings as well, it also says it is simulated. So what does that mean? So by default, PHP Insights uses something called simulated network throttling or simulated CPU throttling. So everything is tested on a fast connection. You know, Google collects a bunch of data um, on that fast connection and then runs a simulation of, well, if this connection was slower, how might that impact page speed? And you can actually see the observed metrics uh, in here. So the way this works is we've got this site speed extension installed and then when you run a PHP Insights test it will also show the original observed metrics that were actually measured in addition to the reported simulated metrics. So you can kind of see whether maybe there's an issue with the simulation or like generally just like understanding how your website performs. But yeah, you're not always going to be collecting simulated data. If I look at Chrome DevTools again, here I can run a new report and if I click on this gear icon, it actually provides two throttling methods. One is a simulated throttling and one is a dev tool throttling. So with dev tool throttling, um, it's basically doing this. Uh, it goes to the network tab, sets the throttling factor, and then loads the page with that throttling enabled. So if I run this now, it's gonna collect the data on the same website, uh, but it's just gonna do the throttling slightly differently. And that is also gonna contribute to differences in the data that is actually being reported. Right, so this is interesting. We actually have a much better performance score. Uh, the SCP is a lot better. And if we look at the metrics, the settings that were used to run this test, um, it's now saying uh, that it's using DevTools throttling to collect this data. So the fact that the data is so much better now, and also that the data is so much better when we run the test in Debug Bear, to me that indicates that actually the simulated throttling is not accurately reporting the data here. And the DevTools throttling is probably more correct. However, there are a few different ways to throttle the network. And we looked at simulated throttling, which is what PageBee Insights uses and which is a default for Lighthouse. We looked at DevTools throttling, but DevTools throttling itself is actually not all that great. DevTools throttling, for example, doesn't have a concept of like server connections. It's just basically the minimum request duration. But if we look at Debug Bear, what we can see is it actually uses something called packet level throttling, which is the most accurate way to collect this data. So we're actually slowing down the data collection or the network at the operating system level. So every like network packet is held back for 150 milliseconds. We only allow 1.6 megabits per second of bandwidth. And this is gonna be more reliable than what you get in um, a Lighthouse test that uses DevTools throttling or simulated throttling. If you'd like to learn even more about network throttling, we have an article comparing different network throttling methods. You can kind of see like if different settings are enabled, how does that impact, you know, page load time and metrics. And how do the de different uh, network throttling methods account for different parts of the time spent on a request? Um, and if you want to understand uh, simulate throttling, there's an article here that kind of guides you through how the data is collected, how the simulation is run. We can see that Google is actually, or Lighthouse is actually building up this like list of dependencies. So, you know, if we wait for the loudest contentful pane, what has to happen first before the loudest contentful pane happens? Well, obviously the HTML document has to load. Then maybe let's say there's like three more render blocking scripts. They are also dependencies of the loudest contentful pane. And then finally, maybe we have to load the loudest contentful pane image. So that's like another dependency. And basically Lighthouse 
estimates like when all of these are going to be loaded on a slower connection and uses that to then generate the test result. And you can see here that the Lighthouse code is actually basically simulating this whole TCP connection. It looks at the way the latency and bandwidth are going to impact uh, performance and then ultimately comes up uh, with this number that is actually being reported. And we also have this like network uh, throttling simulation tool which shows you a bit more information as well. So actually, when Lighthouse does these estimates, it actually comes up with an optimistic estimate and a pessimistic estimate, and then just takes the average between the two. And we also have some more you know, illustrations of how the test settings actually impact the store scores that you're going to get. If a user has a really fast connection and they're very low latency because they're very close to your servers, then they're going to get a really good score. But if they're on a high latency connection, even if they have good bandwidth, they're still going to wait a long time for page content to show up. So the throttling simulation that Lighthouse offers actually makes it very easy to kind of estimate how different like bandwidth and latency settings would impact page performance. Um, but there are limitations to the simulation just because it's not always going to be accurate. There are certain aspects of network performance and browser behavior that are not accurately represented during the simulation. When you're looking into discrepancies between Lighthouse scores across different reasons, I think one big question to ask is why do you care about the Lighthouse performance score or why do you care about the metrics reported by Lighthouse, like the loudest content for paint? Because ultimately what impacts page speed is not the Lighthouse scores, it's just the um, real user data that you see at the top of the PageSpeed Insights report. And if you look at what's below that, that's really just diagnostic info. So if you have a good page experience, it doesn't really matter, but it's really just there for diagnostic data. So generally, I would recommend to look at real user data to see whether you need to optimize your website. And if you're not sure like what you need to do to make your website better, use something like the debug bear speed test just because it's going to have a lot more detail and it's going to be more reliable and actually be able to show you like what's happening and what's holding back your website in a way that a Lighthouse test by itself won't be able to do. And Lighthouse scores can sometimes be pretty unreliable. So there's situations where you might have a good Lighthouse score, but actually you might still have bad performance. So I found an example of that here, where we have a website that allegedly loads in 0.9 seconds, but actually it's gonna have a negative SEO impact because for real users, they actually wait 3.1 seconds for the main page content to show up. Whether that's the case really depends a lot on your website. So in this case, what's actually happening is this website, if you just visit it as like an anonymous user, it's really fast, you know, it's like a marketing website. It's kind of basically static content. So not very much is happening and it's all pretty fast. But if I'm logged in, that's actually when I have the poor experience. So you can see that I go to capwing.com in this example, and it redirects me to this other file, but it's actually like a client side redirect. So the data is still being attributed to the original URL in the Google Crux data. And because this is like this full application, it's gonna load, it's gonna take a lot longer to load all of this content uh, compared to just loading the initial homepage. But yeah, more typically what you're gonna see is more like this, where you have a poor Lighthouse score, but then actually your Cobra Vitals might be really great. And as long as your Cobra Vitals are good, it's not something you have to worry about. So the real user experience is a lot more important because one is what actually impacts your real users. It is what is impacting Google search results. And the Lighthouse score is really just there to help you see how your website might be performing for visitors on a slower connection or what you can do to optimize your website.